just a rough idea what all idea you have on the language part Sofna, you there hello I don't have an experience okay. no worries so uh, before I start I'll just give you some of the samples which okay. you can go through so that the better understanding will be there okay. so let me open a link for W3 students so in this link you can get HTML idea so actually if you talk about the tool service now it is not explicitly based on any of the scripting languages but yeah, if you get these ideas, you will get a better picture of the tool at a later stage when I talk about. Okay. Okay. So what need I have? Um, what I do I need it from you is just open this link and, and go to learn stream. Okay. I want you to just to go through the basics of it, not very much in detail. Just start the basic one. Just see what is stable and what is. Uh, Your voice breaking and is it better? Yeah. Let me mute it. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying there is no dependency on this. <coughs> yeah. But if you go through it, it will be better. Also, now Obviously, you need an instance where you can practice all these coding, scriptings, and everything else, correct? Right? So, for getting the URL, what you have to do is go to the Google and search for developer instance of service. So, are you there? Yeah. So, let me go this one. So go to this link that we can do. Well, in this link, what you'll have to do is after going over here, you will have to register over here. So right now I have a profile created over here. So that's why I'll log in, otherwise you will register. After registering, it will give you option to get your own instance. Let me show it to you. I'll log in and I'll show you mine. Similar way you can do it. So this is a free of cost uh, option. You'll not have to pay anything for it. So you can get a URL. You can get your own web uh, instance or URL. I can say where you can practice service notes, whatever we'll be going through. Okay. So that is one of the prerequisites. So I want two help from you. One is registering over here to this link. So right now you can see I'm logging it through it. And once you will log in over there, as in you will register, you will get an option to request for instance. So you will click on that link in this um, URL, and using that you will get your individual instance in the system. So when I say instance, it is nothing but your own service now system. Okay. So this system right now you can see this is the URL for me. This is explicitly only for me. You can't able to log in until unless I provide you the access. Service now provides every developer its own instance for practicing stuff. Okay. Okay, so that is one of the benefits of service now. That what is there? That people will not have to share the work. As in, let's say if I want something to do for me, no one else can log in into my system and make changes in it. Okay. But there is one restriction. The restriction says that at any point in time you must be doing what? You must be going ahead in the system and you must log in once in a day. Okay. okay? Okay. If you don't do that, if let's say I don't log in into the system every day, so then the system will go in sleep mode. Again, I'll have to log in into this instance, developer URL, and I'll have to wake it up. Okay? So this is some of the prerequisites. Now, Coming back to the service now. So as you know, service now is what? Let's see in the basic stuff. As in if I talk in a layman perspective, what is service now? Let's try to understand that. And then we'll go slowly and steadily in detail. Okay. 
So what is severance now? Think about a scenario where you are setting up an organization. Okay. So what does the organization mean? Obviously, the organization will have n number of employees working under the organization. Will have some assets or let's say a computer or mobile phone or n series allocated to them. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So now we need a platform where people, let's say if I need a service, suppose I'm working for an organization ABC, I find the company recently, maybe for example, and now on the to be provided to me. One day what will you do? One day if you know where the IT support desk sits, you will go over there, you will request them that, okay, please sell it. As a as the group, obviously it becomes very difficult for you to understand which team sits over where. Let's say if your organization in India, suppose for example, is having multiple buildings. So I don't know where does the technical team sit because I'm let's say I'm a new joinee, so it becomes very difficult for me to understand where is the IT support desk, who's need, need uh, whose help I need. But let's say if I want the printer to be configured, which is the team who is responsible for configuring the printer for me. So if you have a platform which I give it to you only for running day-to-day -day work from the organization perspective, it becomes very easy to maintain plus to provide new offerings to the employees. So any ticketing tool is used to run the day-to-day -day job, the day-to-day -day work of an organization. Okay, that is a layman perspective of any ticketing tool. Ticketing tool means you will raise tickets in a tool. In that tool, what kind of tickets it can be? A, it can be a ticket when you need some new offering from the organization. Like let's say I need a laptop or I need a printer to be installed for me or whatsoever it is. And the second kind of ticket can be if I'm already holding a laptop and now the laptop has crashed. So again in this kind of scenario also, I have to con contact the IT support desk so that they will fix the issue for me. Obviously, they will only fix the issue of the laptop which your organization has given it to you. Correct. So, any platform which the organization is using for maintaining their day-to-day -day activities from the organization day-to-day -day perspective mm -hmm. is a ticketing tool. Okay. Is that clear for me? Yeah. Okay. So now I divided the work in two. I told you one is a new offering, other one is raising a concern, as in if something is broken, then that is a concern. Okay? So the first one is called request because you are requesting for something new, so that will be called request. Other one is if something is broken, that time you will be creating an incident. Okay? Yeah. So let's see more in detail of these two terms. I'll go to the slide. Let me walk you through and then again we'll come back to each and every application and see every aspect of those applications in detail. Okay? Okay. So let me start with the overview of the tool. Let's see what a service now tool is. So what it says, it says over here in the slide that Service now is a software platform. Obviously, it is a software. You are accessing it how? You are accessing it through the URL of the tool. You don't have to install anything. You don't have to install the Java or any such packages. Nothing is required. You only have to get the URL of the instance. We use the term instance. Why? I'll explain you later. But you just have to get the URL of the instance to log in it. And obviously, the credential, the user ID and password of yours so that you can log in inside the system. <coughs> you don't have to install any, like if you see any other tool, generally we see we'll have to install Eclipse maybe if it is a Java tool or if it is some SQL, you'll have to install code and all. But okay. here there is no such prerequisite. Okay. It is an independent application. You just have to go, go over here and open the link. You are ready. Let's see this. What it says, ServiceNow is a software platform that supports IT service management and it automates the common business process. 
Okay. So let's break down this line. I'll take first part of it. That is IT service management. So as I told you, IT service means the day-to-day -day activity which an IT organization is running. So I gave you the example that if someone is a new joinee, they are raising a request. If something is broken again, they are raising an incident. So these, the platform which support these kind of activities from organization perspective is a ticketing tool. Service for is also a ticketing tool. There are a number of tools in the market. Service law is not the only ticketing tool in the market. There are plenty others as well. But yeah, right now the demand of service law is very high. We'll see the benefits later. We'll see why it is. But service law is a ticketing tool. You'll be raising tickets. In clear and simple language, if I talk about, yeah. For end user perspective, the definition is I'll go and raise ticket over there in service. In them, uh... Yeah. So let's see what next it says. It says about that this software as a service platform contains number of modular applications that can vary by instance and user. So now let's see what is this one. So again, the first time over here you can see it is SAS. You can see in the bracket I have written SAS. Let's try to understand what is SAS. Now, let's think about a scenario that again you have purchased any tool. So as I told you that if you purchase any tool, the prerequisite generally, if you will see the tools, any tool, you will see that generally for the maintenance of the tool, you will have to install the server. You will have to keep your database ready. You will have to expand the database when and where required means. Overall, I can say that a tool has got n number of dependencies. Correct? So for right. running a particular tool is not an easy task because so many teams are interlinked into that. Not only a tool expert you need, but also you need the database expert. But also you need experts who, who have expertise on the server side so that if something goes wrong on the server side, you have people who can make your server up or who can take up the backup of the servers so that if something goes wrong you have the backups ready and you will just have to change the pointer to this backup instead of the server A whatever was the server executing the scripts earlier. Correct? Are you clear till here or am I going very fast for you? Hello? Supra, are you there? Mm, hello? Supra, are you there? Hello? Yeah, yeah. Are you getting my point? Yeah. Okay. So now, that if, if you purchase a tool, and in that particular tool, if the prerequisite are to be installed in your company's scope, your company is responsible for maintaining the tool, then it means that you are purchasing the entire platform of the tool and you are now responsible for maintaining the tool. So if you are purchasing the product in such a way that after purchasing you are the responsible person for taking care of it, then that way is called platform as a service. So a tool can be purchased in two ways. One is software as a service, one is platform as a service. Okay? okay. So if you purchase platform as I told, the maintenance activity is there in company's scope. So if my company is purchasing any tool as a platform, the com my company will have to hire three set of people obviously. One set of people who know, let's say if service has been purchased as platform as a service, so means minimum of three team is required. One team is what? One team is the team who will do the, who will have the server expertise, as in the Unix command expertise. One team will be there who will have the SQL expertise, and the third team will be there who will have service now level scripting expertise. Correct? Right? Yeah. But how service now made the work easy, and why uh, clients prefer, why any company prefers service now? Because service now says, purchase the product as software as a service means you only care about this instance you only care about this URL and you only have to hire people who know service now scripting 
uh, you don't have to have a team who knows Unix. You don't have to have a team who knows SQL. Okay. Okay. So this is the benefit involved. So who takes care? Obviously, if if the data is getting populated, obviously the data is saved somewhere, correct? In the server, correct? If the data is saved, means yeah, obviously in the backend SQL will be there. But service now says that that SQL or the database or the server, all those stuff are not in the company scope. But even if the company purchases the tool, the scope is still in the service law uh, domain. So service law parent company will take care of maintenance of the tool. If ABC company is purchasing it, ABC company will only have to hire service law experts, people like us, to do the modification on whatever service law has provided out of the box. Yeah. Okay. So service law has designed its own scripting also in fact. So now because of this your work becomes very easy as in if I say that okay, even if you don't know any language, any way it has got its own scripting. So if you know that, that much is enough for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that is an advantage for us as a developer also plus it is an advantage to the company also because company will not have to hire different teams in it. Okay. okay. So that means that term is called software as a service. Means I am purchasing the tool but as a software, not as the entire platform. No. Okay. So it says service now is a software as a service platform and it contains number of applications. Already I told you like incident is an application, request is an application. Detail of these obviously we'll see later. But right now you can understand that n number of applications are there in the system and obviously n number of people will be able to log in, n number of obviously from the organization perspective. If let's say your organization has a strength of let's say 1 lakh people, so obviously every, uh, each of the users, each of the employees of the organization will have their profile created in this URL so that they will be able to log in. Each, each person will have their unique uh, user ID credentials so that they will be logging into the system and doing their work. Okay? Okay. Next what it says, again if I break the statements, you can see it says, Applications that can vary by instance. What is instance? Also when I showed it to you the URL, I told you this is instance. So why do we use the term instance? Let's see that. So actually, if you will see, if let's say if I'm, my company is going to purchase service now, minimum of three URL will be provided to you. Right now only one URL is there because just for the demo purpose we are using the instance. But in a real time scenario, when any company is going to use it, the company will have to purchase the tool. They can't use a normal developer instances alone. It is violation of the company, service law company. If you if your company does it, it is a violation and it, it can be a criminal offense or whatsoever it is. So if your company decides to use service law, they will have to have an agreement with the service law company. And once they sign the agreement, service law provides three different URLs for the same company to your parent company. So let's say my parent company name is ABC. So service now will provide you three different URLs specifically designated for ABC. So let's try to understand why three different URLs. What will be the use of it? Correct? Yeah. So the concept says that at any point in time, now let's think about the scenario that uh, a website may be like ICICI Bank. So if we are using ICICI Bank, and suppose that is the go live instance, as in that is the actual URL which the end users are using for their transaction. And suppose you are the developer of ICICI Bank website. So if you are doing directly your development activities in the ICI Bank website, it can be the case that the coding which you did was not apt and you wanted to debug the code. So maybe you gave some pop-up messages, you gave some kind of messages to see till what line my code is going or whatsoever it is. Correct, it is quite possible, correct. But will your end user be okay if you give some pop-up messages? End user will be in panic mode because they will see, let's say you give the pop-up message, hi, hello, something like that, to see till what point your code is going. But end users will never be okay. If I am doing a transaction and I get a pop-up on my ICSA bank website like hi, hello, obviously I'll not be okay. I'll raise a concern with the bank saying that unwanted messages are coming to me. 
correct? So to avoid situations like this, Savage Law says minimum of three different URL are there so that each team have their own designated URLs. Means the development team will do their development activity only in development URL. Okay, so ABC development URL will be there for development activity. ABC companies test URL will be there for the testing team to do their testing. Once the development is done, if I'm the developer, once my development is done, what will I do? I will push my code to the test URL. If suppose you are the tester, you will do the testing not in dev URL because in dev URL I can I could have given n number of logs because I am still working on let's say code A is complete and I am working on code B now. So, so that the testing team doesn't get um, affected by the code which I have written again for maybe the next release or maybe the next requirement. So, testing team is getting their designated URL where they will only do the testing work. And finally, the th third URL or the last URL will be the go live or the production URL where actually the end users will be using that particular URL for doing their work. Does that make sense? So now are you clear on that? Yeah. Okay. So now when I say production, okay, we are clear that we have a dev test URL and production URL. The term, see, we are not using the term URL, but I'm referring URL by saying instance because even though these three URLs have a different set of people logging in, but then also the overall structure of the URLs will be same. The overall applications in dev will be somehow same as that in test. Only the extra one will be the ones which are getting developed right now. That is the only extra thing in development URL which will not be there in test and production. Similar is the case, only those stuff will be there extra in test which we are testing right now. Otherwise, overall similarity will be there between test and production. So because the overall structure is same only, we use the term instance. So we refer dev by dev instance, test by test instance, production by production instance because these instances belong to the overall same structure. Only new requirement which we are building in dev or based on new testing which we are doing in test. Otherwise the structure is same. So that's why instead of URL we will be using the term instance. Dev instance, test instance, production instance. Okay. So that's what it says. Service now is what? It is a software as a service. What I told you software as a service, I told you that entire platform is there in scope of the service now. So we are just bothered software maintenance activity. Service now software maintenance activity will take care. And it will be provided to you by providing you multiple instances and multiple people will be able to log in into the instance. So are we clear with this slide? Are you having any query on this one? Hello? Yeah, are you clear with that one? Oh, uh, yeah, clear. Okay. So now let's move ahead to the next slide. So already we covered what is SaaS, software as a service that I told. Only the software of the tool you are bothered about, the platform you are not bothered about. That's what it is saying. Software as a service, how are you accessing the data when it is software as a service? You are accessing the data via a web-based interface. That's what you are doing over here. You are just accessing the instance by just opening the URL. The backend of it is anyway not exposed up to you. What is next? Let's see that. In this model, software is centrally hosted. So how is the data coming? So the data is centrally hosted in the cloud and this cloud is in scope of service now. So that's why it is not there in scope of your organization, so that's why you can't access the database directly. You can write service now level scripting to fetch the data from the database. You can write service now level scripting to send the data to the database, but you can't see the actual data in the database, as in you can't log into the database level. You can access the data indirectly via scripting of service now, but directly you can't log in over there. 
okay let's see what is next next one talks about the history of service now what it says it was founded way back in 2003 by a guy called fred laddie and this guy was working for what he was initially working for remedy corporation why am i putting in pencil remedy because uh, as i told you n number of ticketing tools are in the market and out of those ticketing tool remedy is one of the biggest competitor of service now okay okay so remedy is one of the uh, biggest competitor what all other ticketing tools are there in the market the relevant ones so the relevant ones started as in the first company which came up with this concept with the ticketing tool concept was ibm and the tool name was ibm pioneer the second company which came up with the concept was hp and the tool name was hp service manager then came remedy and currently service now is the biggest competitor of all these because of its uh, saas technology the one that will not have to take care about multiple teams that gives it the uh, best benefit because uh, the tool becomes more stable because the uh, replication activity of the server the database needs to be expanded or anything the service now pairing company is taking care of it at any point in time the maintenance of the tool becomes very easy that's why any company prefers service now in comparison to any other ticketing tool in the market and also when we will be covering integrations at the end of the classes as in i think last four five classes will be on integration that time we will be seeing that the integration also as in if you want to do integration using service now service now is customized to such a level that you will not have to write explicit java codes with 10000 lines and so on so forth instead you will just have to do configuration to get the work done so if you will see any other tool let's say if i pick up remedy or something you will have to write all the java packages call you will have to define classes and number of code scripts will be there but over here the service now had made the integration platform also very easy for end users or for the technical guy to understand and work okay okay so that's it about the betterment as in that's the benefit of service now on any other platform on top of it let's see what next so it says that service now is based on itl standards let's see it says so what is itl standard let's try to understand that for that i'll go to the next slide so itl stands for information technology infrastructure library okay so what is itl is it says it elaborates or i'll say widens your scope your approach whenever you are developing a tool for example let's say today you get a requirement that maybe you have to design a tool where people will be able to log in and store their let's say uh, maybe the books which they are calling maybe for example library management so whenever we get a common perspective what do we think about our only concern is about meeting the technical requirement whatever has been given it to you correct okay but i tell says you should not only think about the technical aspect of the tool which you are developing but you should also think about n number of other scopes how your tool will be better than any other tool in the market how your tool stability are you taking care of the stability of the tool are you taking care of the demand of the tool as in how are you going to increase the demand of the tool correct right. so it uh, broadens your Uh, mind when you are developing a tool so itl is just a framework it just tells you that okay follow the step a b c d but it never says that you must follow each of the step or uh, always the choice is with you so let's say if itl talks about that step a step b c and d even if i follow a b and c and if i do any of the still it is itl tool only okay okay So it just gives you a framework. It just gives you an overall picture of the. For example, if I talk about, I'll not go that much in detail in a different topic for a training perspective. But yeah, so anyway, that much detail is not required. But for the understanding purpose, what is ITIL? So it is a framework which has got n number of life cycles in it. 
and some of the life cycle process are thinking about the demand of the tool, demand management. Will people prefer your tool and what are the preferences because of which people will look for your tool than any other tool in the market. We should also think about the capacity management. For example, that is, let's say is the tool has enough server to take the load that let's say 10,000 people are logging in one time, is the server, does the server go down or is it able to take care of that much load? Then taking care of, of the backups, as in let's say the tool you are developing, if it is storing critical data, are you keeping daily backups of it? So that if let's say tomorrow, if because of some calamity, the data crashes in location A, do you have a server backup in location B? So that you can restore the data back in server A. So these are some of the approaches which helps you in designing the tool in a better way plus obviously it will give the customers more customer satisfaction will be there because customers will be more happy with the product delivered to them at the end. Okay. Okay. So that is about it. Let's see the next approach. So it says ITIL is the most widely accepted approach to IT service management in the world and it says ITIL can help individuals as well as organization use IT to realize business change transformation and growth. So I'll proceed on this and I'll come to the benefits of ITIL. Let's see the benefits of ITIL. What all it talks about? So the first benefit is it increases the user as well as the customer satisfaction. So as I told you that because of all the scopes which ITIL takes care of, because of that the product delivered is a better one, the stability of the product is better, the maintenance of the product becomes better because of which the customer satisfaction obviously will be more. And because you are taking care of the backups and stuff, obviously the rework will be reduced. Rework when will you do? If something is lost, you have to rework for that. But if you have the data maintained for it before, then obviously the rework will reduce. That's what it says over here. If rework is reduced means what? Financial saving will be there. Service will increase backup concept and to market will be less, right? Because you are prepared with all the capacity demanding in before and you are prepared with the backups, you are prepared with dividing the load with multiple server approaches. Let's say if the server is going to be loaded a lot, I'm thinking that okay, maybe 10,000 people will log in at a time. I can have server A, B, C and I can write the logic in such a way that let's say if 5,000 people log in after that move the rotate the server so that now the load moves to server B. After again that 5,000 move the load to server C. So the load is getting divided and because of that what will happen? The time to market will be less because you are prepared with all the scopes, all the issues coming in future. IT gives you the scope to understand that before and it prepares you beforehand with or what all risks can be involved in your tool at a later stage. So that's why because of that rework will be less, customer satisfaction will be more, time to market will be less and all those stuff. Okay? Okay. So these are the benefits and obviously as I told you, if you will see in the previous slide, I told you that ServiceNow is a tool based on ITIL standards. So obviously whatever benefits we saw in this ITIL, all the benefits will be there in ServiceNow also because ServiceNow is based on ITIL framework. So the benefits of ITIL are there in ServiceNow as well. Okay? Okay. Next are features of ServiceNow. What are features are there in ServiceNow? First one is ServiceNow is very simple and consistent. Consistency already we know because of the backup load and everything as I was telling you. It is very simple because if you know, for example, as I told you, that if something is broken, you need to create an incident from an end user perspective. If the end user know what application are they looking for, they just have to type in the application name in their website. The moment you will type incident, you can see, for example, you are getting so many options for incident. And the options are quite elaborated, but just by seeing the name, people can make out for what purpose you are going to use which option. For example, if you click on create new, you are going to create a new incident. Assign to you, you keep all the incidents assigned to you. And so on and so forth. It is very simple to use. 
Flexibility we'll see later when we're covering integration and easy to integrate again at the time of integration. So right now we can understand one is it is very simple. Flexible okay. and easy to integrate it is how we'll see that later. Next is the data is more secure. It provides you security. How? Let's see that. If you will see always the data you pass on, it is getting passed on through the HTTPS protocol. You can see HTTPS is there. So even if I remove S and I press and target, it get related to HTTPS. So always whatever data is getting passed on from this platform to the server or from server when the data is coming back to your form and all, always the transaction is through HTTPS so the data is more secure. The security is maintained in the system. Okay, so that is about the security. And last one is speed time to production. So speed time to production already we saw in ITIL that already you are taking care of the risks and all. So because of that the time to production will be less. So these are some of the features of service. Now, you will see many a time people using the term slow. So slow is nothing but it is a short form of service. Okay. Okay. So far so good? Yeah. Yeah. Now this is one of the important topic. Let's pay our attention over here. So this talks about the architecture of service. Now, mm -hmm. service architecture has been designed. Let's start from the top. So the top one is user interface. How will any interact? Obviously, user interacts using the user interface. User interface is nothing but the look and feel when you log in into the URL. So like here, the data is coming, correct? So this is the interface to the interact. For example. Let's say if I select an incident, if I select create new, for example, so a form will load where I'll create a new incident. So I'll have to put in my details and all. So this is the user interface. Through this page, I'm going to navigate. I'm going to con um, communicate via the system. So this is the user interface. So obviously, from an end user perspective, user interface is the page which he is going to see. And these two SOAP and other protocols are these are integration protocols. So when the third party is sending data into the system or data is coming outside the system, so all these integration uh, protocols also lie on the same layer as is the user interface. Okay. So what is protocols? Anyway, we'll see the elaborated one later. But right now we can understand user interface is on the top of the architecture and on the same level lies all the integration protocols. Next is what? Next is the scripting layer. So as I told you, ServiceNow has designed its own scripting. So that ServiceNow level, uh, ServiceNow specific scripting is there in the scripting layer. Who will write the scripting? We, the ServiceNow developer, people like you and me, we will be doing the ServiceNow level scripting over here in the scripting layer. Okay. So this layer is exposed only to developers like us. It is not exposed to the end user. Obviously, end user will not be knowing service not scripting. End user will be using the tool just for raising incident, just for raising their request. We, the developers, will write scripting based on the client's requirement. Correct? Yeah. Now, next is the DB layer and database layer. These two layers are exposed only to the service not company. Even though if I am a developer, I can't see what is there in the DB layer. I can't see what is there in the database. This is not exposed to it. So actually what happens is, for something to be shown in the user interface, you write the scripting. And database always only understands SQL query. So when you wrote ServiceNow level scripting, this needs to be translated into SQL queries so that database can understand it. So this conversion of service not scripting to database SQL query happens in the DB layer. So DB layer has the conversion doing it from the scripting layer to the SQL command. So in the DB layer, all the SQL command conversion will be sitting. And finally, these SQL commands will hit the database. Then once the data is returned from the database, it will be returned in the SQL format to the DB layer. And again, service not Developers like us, we are going to understand the data returned in the service now level scripting format. So again, DB layer will do the conversion and send the 
service file level scripting return value in the scripting layer and finally the data will be displayed in the user interface to the end user. Okay. So are we clear with this? Yeah. So far so good? Yes. So I'll end today's session over here. Tomorrow we'll start with the key applications, okay? Okay. Okay, then let's start tomorrow the same timing and then I'll show you incident and all because this was a demo one so I didn't stretch it for an hour. From tomorrow onward the duration will be one hour. Okay. Okay? Okay. Thanks for talking.